No one else is saying this, so maybe I'm wrong, but I thought this debate was the worst thing DeSantis has done so far, and I think he's going to lose unless he makes radical changes. if, If I could crown the next president of the United States, like the Pope used to crown kings, it would be DeSantis. I think he's the best man for the job, and I believe he'll be president one day, but there were two minutes that I think just put the mark of Cain on this guy if he does not turn himself around. One was when Brett Baer asked who would support Trump if he was the nominee. And you can see, if you're watching, you can see it. The people raise their hands and DeSantis looks around to see what the basic opinion is. And then he raises a hand. People were saying, well, it's no big deal. That's a big, big deal deal. You've got to know who you are. You know, I don't care what his answer is. I don't care if he says he'll support him or not. He can make his, let him, I will listen to his argument. Let him make his argument, but you got to know it and you got to say who you are. That's what integrity is. And that is what we're looking for from our leaders, because that is what we are looking for from ourselves. A lot of, you know, well, let me, let me play the other, the other uh, moment that I think was really bad for him. Uh, this was about uh, January 6th and whether uh, Mike Pence had done the right thing by allowing the votes to go through. There's cut three. Do you believe that Mike Pence did the right thing on January 6th? So here's what we need to do. We need to end the weaponization of these federal agents. But that's, right. not, but I will do that. that's not the question. Here, I, I know, but here's the thing. You can answer this the election <laughs> is not about January 6th of 2021. It's about January 20th of 2025. Again, I am telling you that mofo is not real, right? I mean, look, I don't care if he thinks Pence did right. I have my opinions. If he thinks Pence did wrong, I don't care. Whatever he says, I want to know what he believes, and I want to hear him say it. You can't, it's just weaselly to do that stuff. Now, this is something that happens. I think it happens to every man at some point in his life. Every man of substance at some point in his life is going to face a moment when he thinks that he can get the gold ring, he can get the prize by becoming less than he should be. And I think we all fail in that first try, but you can come back from it if you say to yourself, gee, I never want to feel that shame again. If you say to yourself, well, I got the prize, I got the million bucks, so now that's the way I'm going to behave, then you're lost. But I think like if he thinks about this, this is th- that movie, The Candidate. I don't know, every, know if you ever saw that Robert Redford movie. He is obviously surrounded by consultants and he is listening to them and he should tell them to go away. He's just done a great job as governor. He should go out there and say what he thinks. And if people don't like him, then they won't vote for him. And that's not the end of the world. The end of the world is when you cease to be yourself. Now, a lot of people are saying Vivek won the debate. And I actually don't agree with this. Uh, they, but, but that's what they like about him. He said stuff when a kid from Yaf asked him about climate change. He said stuff like this. Cut five. No, I didn't raise 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 a hand. Let us be honest as Republicans. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change agenda is a hoax. The climate change agenda is a hoax. And we have to declare independence for it. And the reality is, the anti-carbon agenda is the wet blanket on our economy. Now, this stuff about everybody's bought and paid for, that's garbage. He's, he acted like a child with that stuff, with the, the kind of jabs, and he was the only independent, and he was the, the you know, funny-looking guy. It was, just, it was just, that part was just awful. But the part about climate change being a hoax, that's a fact, Jack. I mean, that is, a, you know, that is the real thing, and they are destroying, not just destroying the economy with it, they are turning the economy into a fascist economy where g- corporations ostensibly free, have to do what the government says to get their hands on that sweet, sweet green energy money. And it's affecting all of Europe. It's affecting, and it's not just here, that thing that was sold to us as the Inflation Reduction Act is in fact the Green New Deal. And it's pouring all this money into this bogus stuff that cannot possibly create the energy we need and ignores the facts. I mean, this is uh, Jorn Lumborg is the one person on this I actually trust. He says that climate catastrophes are skewed to show that there's many more of them over the last century. But when you measure the deaths, which is the important thing, large-scale deaths have been consistently recorded. The disaster data space death toll uh, is very close to official estimates. Over the, over the last a century ago, almost half a million people died on average each year from storms, floods, droughts, wildfires, and extreme temperatures. Over the next 10 decades, global annual deaths from these causes declined 96% to 18,000. In 2020, they dropped to 14,000. The more money we have made because we're using fossil fuels, the more places get built, the more buildings there are, so there's more uh, populated places that get hit by storm. 
storms, but there's also more power to build better buildings. There's more power to protect people. People are dying less because of the climate. The climate is not going to blow us away. This is simply a means of scaring you into taking control. And the people who actually, you know, people who speak these truths that we all know in our hearts are the people we turn to because it means they are, they're at least saying what they think. If, if, you, if you believe in climate control, in climate uh, change, and that climate change is a catastrophe, you should say it. It's up to us. See, who are these people afraid of? They're afraid of us. They're afraid of losing our vote. Yes, you know, you have to be charming. You have to be articulate. You have to make your case. But make your case for what you believe because we're sick of all these people lying to us. That is the problem. We're looking for integrity in our homes. We're looking for integrity in our lives. All of us struggle with this. It is always difficult to uh, fight off the temptation to get that thing in front of you that you want, a new job, a big sale, a girl, whatever it is that you want. It's tough not to lie in that moment. It's tough on all of us, and all of us make mistakes. But politics just become, it just becomes rote for them. But somewhere underneath that, there has got to be the real man who knows what he did. Listen, just leaving out what you think of people, what, what your opinions of these people are, what your opinions of their histories are. The people who did the best in this debate were Nikki Haley and Mike Pence. They're never going to win. And they're never going to, I'll tell you why in a minute. But and I know many of you hate Mike Pence and all that stuff. And that's fine. But I'm just saying they said, they came to say what they wanted to say, and they said it. And when Nikki Haley took Vivek down on foreign policy, she was absolutely right. This is the problem with Vivek. He says a lot of things that I agree with, and he's incredibly smart and incredibly articulate. But when he actually tells you his policies, they're ridiculous. Uh, and this is what how Nikki Haley hit back against him. And she was right. It's got 11. A win for Russia is a win for China. We have to know that. Ukraine is the first line of defense for us. And the problem that Vivek doesn't understand is he wants to hand Ukraine to Russia. He wants to let China eat Taiwan. He wants to go and stop funding Israel. You don't do that to friends. What you do instead is you have the backs of your friends. Ukraine is a front line of defense. Putin has said if Russia, once Russia takes Ukraine, Poland and the Baltics are next. That's a world war. We're trying to prevent war. Look at what Putin did today. He killed Pergozin. When I was at the UN, the Russian ambassador suddenly died. This guy is a murderer, and you are choosing a murderer over, over a pro American country. Now, what I like about this so much is that Nikki Haley knows that a lot, a lot of Republicans don't want to be in Ukraine. And they're saying, why are you spending money over there? It's another endless war. Why are we in these endless wars? My personal opinion is we did the right thing going in in Ukraine, but we're doing it in the wrong and incompetent way. I'd rather we didn't do it than do what we're doing, which is the usual thing we're fighting to lose. We're building another Vietnam, another Afghanistan by sending them stuff, but not sending them enough stuff. I don't want to see a single American die for Ukraine, but I think we should help them win if we can, because I think Nikki Haley is right. You know, these things do come to your door eventually, and Russia and China are the same thing, and Russia and China are also Syria, and these are things we're going to have to fight. That time is coming. I'm sorry. I wish we could all huddle in our shells. But but even if you disagree with her, you got to admire her for coming out and saying what she has to say. And this is what I admire about it. Here is the problem with both Nikki Haley and Mike Pence and a lot of other people on the stage whose names you can't even remember. Is Here is a cut six when Vivek is talking about, you know, the fact that the government is so corrupt and people can't live out the American dream. And Pence and he get in this squabble. It's cut six. We don't have an identity crisis with that. We're not looking for a new national identity. The American people are the most faith-filled, freedom-loving, idealistic, hard-working people the world has ever known. We just need government as good as our people. Well, Mike, I think the difference is you might have, some others like you may have on the stage, it's morning in America speech. It is not morning in America. We live in a dark moment, and we have to confront the fact that we're in an internal sort of cold cultural civil you war. You are equating the American people with the failed win. government in Washington, D.C. We just need government as good as our people again. So I can't, so let me Governor just finish DeSantis, addressing DeSantis, that slogan, wait, wait because I don't know what that slogan Brett, means. Mark, we need I to shut down the administrative DeSantis. state. Crime, Mark, that's actually how we translate crime it. Crime has Brett, been Mark, on the rise. See, here's the thing. That that moment tells you everything about why guys like Mike Pence and Nikki Haley are not going to put their numbers on the board that they need. That moment that Pence is talking about is gone. That old Republican moment is gone because the old American moment is gone. They're using the Justice Department to indict their political opponent. They are 
taking over businesses and forcing them to go woke, basically coercing them into going woke. They're, they're lighting up the White House with rainbow flag, flags. This is not a moment for new, it, it is a moment for new policies. I mean, Pence isn't wrong. We need a better government. Of course, that's true. But he's wrong that we can be led out of corruption by simple policies. We need to reform a broken system. And then when Vivek talks about the administrative state, he is right. We saw Trump come in and the entire force of the government ignore what he wanted to do, the policies that he wanted to put in, oppose what he wanted to do, thwart what he wanted to do. That's not how the country is supposed to work. That was the voice of the people that got him elected according to the Constitution. You do what the executive says to do, but they're saying no. Joe Biden is going out and saying, I'm going to fix the student loans. I'm going to pay off the student loans after the Supreme Court said it's unconstitutional. And people are actually on TV saying, well, don't pay attention to the Supreme Court. They're not a real Supreme Court. These guys have lost the plot of America. And yes, we, you know, Pence is right. We need a better government. But you have got to go in there and do a purge. You have got to close down the Department of uh, Education. You've got to close down the EPA. These places have got to be shrunk and shrunk and shrunk again. These people have to be thrown out onto the streets and, and, and their Rolodex uh, thrown away and burned. You know, th- this, is a, this is a true moment of, of crisis, not because... You know, of course, because of policy, of course, policy matters. But there is something structurally wrong with the government right now. The uh, not only are the elites corrupt, but the Congress isn't doing its job. So the thing is, we're in a relationship with these people. They're afraid of us. They're afraid if they say what they believe and and what they'll really do, that we won't like them and we won't vote for them. And they're right. If we don't like their policies, we won't like them and we won't vote for them. But what we hate about them is when they can't actually say what they mean. You know, I I admired Nikki Haley when she said, look, you you can't pass an abortion ban because we don't have 60 uh, votes in the Senate. You know, that's just that's just the truth. But I want to know. I I don't want to hear just I'm pro-life. I want to know what she thinks ultimate where we think ultimately this is going you know, the the abortion thing is going. Is it something we want to handle federally? Is that your policy? Just tell me, explain it to me. Tell me your logic. I'm ready to trust you. I'm ready to believe you. But if you're going to look around to see whether you should raise your hand and whether everybody else is raising your hand, if you're going to say, oh, I'm not going to answer this question about January 6th because too many people will hate me. Everybody, everybody is worried about the MAGA people. And look, the MAGA people can be intransient, but intransigent, but that's the, that's the state of play. All of us, all of us want things that we can't have by being honest. All of us, everybody wants stuff you cannot get if you are honest and decent. In fact, the more honest and decent you are, the harder certain things are going to be. Popularity is not going to be as easy to get if you are an honest, straightforward person with integrity. Sometimes you you win. Sometimes we get that guy. You get a Winston Churchill. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes he just has to go back into exile because the people aren't ready. But the thing, but the thing is this: if we want integrity from our leaders, we have to listen. We have to let. We have to have integrity. We have to let them say what they have to say. We can't just say, "I'm out. I'm done." You insulted Trump. You're not loyal. That that by the way, that meme that you're not loyal if you're running against Trump. That is the most childish crap I've ever heard. This is a country. Adults run for president in the country. They're not. You're not bound to Donald Trump. None of us owes Donald Trump a thing. We do not owe him a thing. So again, I'm not telling you not to love Trump. I can see where he's lovable, and I'm going to talk about him more in a moment. And I can see why he's lovable. I'm going to talk about that too. All I'm saying is these guys are afraid of us. We have to make it so at least, at least they can speak their minds. And those who can't just have to get off the bus. And that guy is great. For more, like and subscribe. And subscribe to The Andrew Clavin Show wherever you get your podcasts.